Okay. okay. Um, the and and Tim. Yes. The last uh, last thing before we break up here is discuss the future format of the production suite review. Um, after some discussion several months ago, um, it became apparent we wanted to shake it up a little bit, and that's what uh, Jeff Manikin and I tried to do, um, along with the help of other people, other input, and so on. Um, so the, the the broad question is, and maybe Andrew can take note on this too, is, I mean, did you like the format? Is it evolving in the way you want? Um, uh, did we cover what we needed? Uh, what were we missing? What other methods of discussion and so on are useful? Uh, and then I will let Jeff say a couple things. I'm, I'm too tired to talk uh, right now, but just the questions. We, uh, we went from a two-day to a three-day format. We'd like to know if, if that worked. Uh, if, if that worked, uh, we uh, tried a, a mix of open discussions and, and panels and, and presentations. Uh, was that the right mix? Do you need more discussion, less discussion? Uh, we uh, tried the uh, quick hit uh, topic uh, uh, session this morning just to give a, a little break from all the discussion and to hit some topics that we get a, a lot of questions about and thought you might like some details on. Uh, we just again, we, we we'd like to hear what you, how what you think uh, of of the three days. Um, I'll jump in here. <laughs> I seem to be doing that a lot. Um, more Himawari? No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> no, actually, I like the way we did it this year. I mean, in the past, we haven't had to have enough discussion, so. Especially today's discussion, and um, uh, thank you, Ken, for helping lead that today. That was really good. Um, I, I, I certainly think that you know doing those kind of things, and you know even with your discussion, that uh, you know where do we go? How do we try to make sure that we have a good mix between the field and and uh, EMC? Um, that's perfect. So I, I like the way, what you guys have done here. That's just me speaking, though. Okay. Um, great. Start that ball rolling. Oh, something else to think about. Did you like the longer coffee breaks and, and lunch? You could discuss things as well. That was one of our ideas. So, the answer to that is, uh, no. I, I think it's always valuable to have time during, you know, not not being in a session through lunchtime and that sort of thing. Um, no, I think the, the format was improved over previous years. Uh, I think the meeting has to go through an evolution, um, and I think this is the first step to it. Uh, the, in particular, I think the, these quick hit presentations were, were very good. Um, the, um, I, I've got a list of things I think we need to, to do for next year. Um, the, uh, I think for, you know, if we, if we can jump ahead to next year a little bit, I, I think that, uh, well, first I think we need to decide what this meeting is really or who it's for. Um, get some objectives out there uh, prior to the meeting. Uh, it, it will help us focus a bit, I think, uh, in terms of if there's anything uh, particular for meeting. Um, so get the objectives out there. Uh, I think next year, uh, I'm a little biased since I just moderated that last session, but I think we need a, a little piece of the meeting to talk about how we use have achieved or what obstacles we ran into in trying to achieve the action items. Um, there was something that came up this year um, a week ago that kind of sent the SSD chiefs into a, a scurry. Um, all of a sudden there was a, an email that came first from Ming um, about Louie expecting Suze to be here. And that was uh, a surprise to us. Uh, I've never prevented a Sioux from coming, but uh, this year with travel caps, uh, I'm, I'm lucky to even be here with the travel caps uh, the way they are right now. Uh, I may not ha be able to go on another trip this year, but that came as a, a little, little bit of a surprise, surprise only in the sense of the short-term notice. Uh, I'm not surprised Louie would like to see Sioux at the Sioux Endos at this meeting. That came as a little bit of a, a short-term surprise, and 
you know, I talked to Steve Zubrick. He was here. He's, I think he may still be on the phone. Um, managed to achieve it that way. But, you know, with the combination of short notice and also the travel caps, there wasn't really any way we could get anybody here. So we need to decide if there's a role for them. I was I was in the nine o'clock meeting with Louis where he says, Oh, by the way, how many Sus are going uh, going to the production suite? Uh, I'm meeting with uh, the SSD chiefs uh, at noon. Uh, uh, please uh, tell me who is coming. So that was that was that was where Andrew's uh, quick flurry of emails came from to identify uh, which which thirteen of the uh, signed up at the knees actually were that. So so yeah, we were just as surprised by that. Uh, but, but along the same line, it's not. Not unsurprising that he's doing it. The timing was rather interesting. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not opposed to Susan Doe's being here and even other field people for that matter. Um, but if we want them here, we need to define a role and a, and a function for them and, uh, um, you know, take, take advantage of them while, they, while they're here. So we need to work that into the meeting. Matt Perutka, MDL, and it feels to me like two and a half, two and a half days might be adequate from what I've what I've been seeing and feeling. Um, but that a couple well-timed memos and a little bit of progress within the uh, organization for modernization could change that drastically. There are pieces of the organization dedicated towards the requirements and the operations, such as AFS, and I'm a little surprised at how little we've seen of them, and perhaps some, some effort to get them here in some way, shape, or form. Uh, I, I did talk to Andy, and uh, unfortunately, uh, the coordination went wrong way, way back because they have a bunch of uh, central uh, AFS meetings at the same time, too. Uh, uh, Andy was actually invited to uh, give a, a short overview of where CARTS was going as part of the discussion yesterday. And so <laughs> next year, we'll make sure that we'll get on his calendar way earlier. All great ideas. <laughs> there might be, I, I find an interesting mixture. This is the first time I have paid a whole lot of attention to the production suite. I've popped in and out for pieces in the past, but it's not pretty much a big part of my day job. So I'm going to say some way to structure and make it clear which pieces are going to be really technical and which ones are going to be more overview, because I think that there's a lot of value for a lot more people to participate remotely and whatever we can do to facilitate that part. So. Okay. Okay. Okay, Jeff McQueen first. Uh, yeah, I thought it was a really great format. Actually, it was probably the more most interactive that I've attended, and I thought it was really well planned and prepared by Mike and Jeff and everyone else. Um, I just wanted to add that there's a major air quality program, nearly a million dollars a year, the weather surface is spending on it, and uh, that doesn't just include ozone in particulate matter, but it also includes volcanic ash, um, radiological, if there was a Fukushima type event in the U.S., you guys would be involved. And I think it's important to uh, maybe just have a, from the air quality program manager, uh, have a uh, just a brief overview of what's going on in that field for, like I say, volcanic ash, um, ozone particulate matter, uh, dust, for example, there was a huge dust event in, the, in uh, was it Utah, 17 people were killed related to visibility. So the, so these products are out there, and I'm not sure that everyone is aware that, in fact, we're running two models for smoke and dust right now, and uh, one model for, for air quality in general. <clears throat> and I think this might be an evolving and growing area, you know, considering uh, what we saw last summer with the uh, smoke fires in, in, in the Northwest. This is not a, a one-time occurrence. It, you know, as we sort of see in Canada, it's having tremendous fires year after year. So. So I think it's good that Weather Service uh, be on the front, leading edge of that, since so much is is uh, 
is due to weather that's driving these processes. Thanks. Yeah, for uh, what's trying to be accomplished, I think this format uh, this year worked out fairly well. But a lot of things, um, I don't know, this room was not exactly conducive to a lot of, uh, I don't know, in-depth, ad hoc type of discussions. And if the purpose of this meeting is to provide more advice or guidance to some upper level authority, and if that authority is only Hendrick, um, well, it's got to start somewhere. Uh, the comment was only. Um, <laughs> but you mean start or stop somewhere? Yes. Well, and, that, and that's going to be another issue, too, is what are we going to do? Because I can see this meeting having uh, subcomponents involving, you know, what are the requirements? And maybe we need a shepherd or a Sherpa to keep us from turning products and requirements and flipping the two definitions back and forth. And then there's more of a, a policy component. And it's almost as if if you, if you go to that route, you're going to have to start thinking about breaking it out, which will probably upset some people simply because that means you're no longer able to take part in every discussion and you're having to parse yourself out like you're at an AMS meeting. Excellent comments. Let me, let me uh, give a little background to everything. Uh, we used to hold this meeting in the seventh floor of the World Weather Building. Uh, try to fit, remember what it feels like fitting 70 people in that room. And so, yeah, nice and warm. <laughs> so one of the reasons why I wanted in here is because I want as many people as possible from EMC and everywhere else to see this show and tell part. Because for me, this is by far the best place and time to make sure that especially my new hires get a crash course in all the things that we're doing. And I made a little head count, and there were well over 150 people here on the first morning, and closer to 200. The rooms next door are better for a discussion like this, but over 70 or 80 people, that becomes pretty uncomfortable too. And so it's a, it's a bit of a, uh, of a catch-22. Yeah, it will be great. But this goes back to why do we have the meeting? We may, we may specifically for that reason uh, split the meeting in a piece that we know that we're going to get a lot of people and a piece that we know that's going to be the smaller group. And uh, <laughs> one of the reasons why we reserve everything is that if we want to on the fly, we can change that over. Um, we did think about um, breakout sessions, especially after the pseudo conference. We talked last year around this time about reorganizing it, and then we said, slow down a little bit. I want to see what comes out of UMAC first. So we were a little bit on the later side, but we actually talked about potentially doing breakout sessions, particularly to talk about potentially bring out things like requirements from different groups and things like that. Um, so, so that's definitely on the on the radar screen to do later. And a completely different thing, and that uh, I might as well in inject that now. Um, a lot of, uh, uh, especially on the on the on the SSD chief side, uh, there's been a lot of push of more discussion, and we really like that. So we cut down the presentations a little bit, but we really still have more or less the same format. Another, another idea that we've been betting around is that instead of having these, uh, the, all these uh, uh, rel relatively too short presentations of the branches, replace that by having all three days long uh, one big poster of every major system that we have with uh, present state, what's improved, and what is the next next. Um, uh, next year's plans. If you do that, then uh, you uh, you uh, allow people to focus on the things they're interested in or get the whole big picture. Uh, but of course, the, the the downside of that is, I did see 150 people looking at that stuff here. So, so I don't know. <laughs> I would like to get some feedback on on whether whether we we really should do that part or cut it down even further. Well, I've seen, Hendrik, I've seen that uh, kind of a hybrid done at various places where you would, uh, you would have a briefer, uh, a more brief, excuse me, presentation um, and then follow up with a poster session. So you, you, would have, you would have, you know, fewer PowerPoint talking at you time and 
uh, like do two or three, um, one or two slides most, talk about what the highlights are, and then come see me at post or whatever, whatever. Uh, so I, I think that might be a, a one approach you might want to do. And then whatever you can do in the back of the room, the other room, whatever you want to But I do agree, though, that uh, the interest was high that first day. It was it was more full that day than here. But frankly, I got more out of the last two days, and, uh, and I, I like the panel discussion type approach, uh, regardless what the subject was. Um, and uh, the last comment was something that I... Mike and I had talked about, and I sent you an email about. We'll talk about later, but I'll, you know, at some point we'll have to go back and look. And is this going to be the NCEP suite production review, which includes everybody in the NCEP suite, which is MDL, NOS, and others, or is this going to be like it was this year, which is primarily the EMC review? Uh, I would prefer the the first one because otherwise uh, I I will have to hold my own review with largely the same people, uh, and it would be. Uh, for them to, to, us to do it together, and since we are oh so interconnected anyway, I think it makes sense for us to do it together. All right. So, all right. Thanks. Exactly. I mean, I even ha have written on my notes that uh, engaging MDL, NOS, and WC, you know, headquarters folks as well as EMC, and the field in terms of the uh, the whole planning, and um, start that even earlier. Um, you know, do we do breakout sessions? One set, two set. What what seems to be what might be efficient for that? What are the topics we could cover? They could change. Just some common themes. Where where have we gotten from last year? Um, so there's topics that could be repeated in a sense, but we've made progress. But there's always new things, and that's why um, Jeff and Jeff Domingo had suggested the quick hits. Was that hot topic? Something like that. Yeah. Anyway, um, anyone else uh, that wants to jump in? Criticisms are quite. Fine, you know this is sort of a new, uh, sort of a, a little new, new way. Go ahead, go ahead, Jeff. So, <clears throat> I like this room because it's comfy. I'll just say, um, it kind of, to me, it symbolizes <clears throat> the new facilities, and uh, I preferred it the last two years in here versus the smaller room. Just, but. Um, I do think that, you know, in counting, we were getting roughly 75, 65 to 75 people a day registering for and listening in. Um, whether or not it was interactive enough for them or not, I think some, some prefer just listening in and don't mind interacting. Some of them would text me and say, ask this question. So, you know. Um, But some some of the high online normally we don't have that big an online presence, but some of that high online presence is because of Louis. And and just I, I was counting in roughly eight central region STI types per day. Not there was more registered, but actually the ones that were actually logged in. Um, because uh, John Ice was giving us some reports, so I think that's pretty good. It's pretty good interest level. Uh, I thought the discussion. I thought there was a good balance. I liked the three days, and there was there was a lot. There was plenty of discussion time. Uh, I did find it interesting, as you pointed out, that the attendance was higher when it was very structured. Maybe that's just the, the personality of a lot of of the science types is they like structure and so they knew exactly what would be presented at every 15 minutes. And so the one the one slight, and I, I say criticism, but some of the discussion periods it was pretty clear what, what, what we wanted to get out of the discussion and others maybe, you know, it's not bad to have a discussion period where it isn't quite clear exactly what you want to get out of it, but at times it, I felt I struggled to what, how can I interact with this and actually, so, yeah, I mean, and, and I think that could be as simple as, you know, a, a couple, three sentences that, that go, you know, this is, this is what I, what my expectation, because sometimes the title's good at telling you, but sometimes it's not really clear. 
time in, in terms of uh, setting a, a, a list of expectations and questions for, uh, for the uh, SSD chiefs. That's exactly what we should have done with, with, uh, with uh, the formatting of the, of the open discussions, too. That, that kind of idea. The variety for, the, for having asked the branch chief and putting in the questions in advance, I really I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, and my name's not anonymous either, but um, I know. But uh, yeah, we we planning to have a, ask the SSD. Yeah, chief but I, I think you should. But you know, on those Google on those forums, you can just require that it automatically logs their login, and then you don't have to. This, Anonymous bit. I mean, you know, I, I, I'm sorry. I don't usually talk that way. Oh. Uh, or colorful language. I always, I was always pictured. <laughs> <laughs> Are you on mine, Cliff? I know Cliff was in on the first one. Sorry, logging in too, so. Just said it just uh, where you said ask the SSD chiefs, but in the sense of exchange of ideas and, and having people query the field, uh, maybe that isn't a bad idea. Or maybe if we get Sues here, ask the Sues. Um, maybe it's another form of interaction, two-way interaction that you know people here can ask them about operational issues. Yeah, and a little bit to our defense, it's not like we didn't try very aggressively to get more private industry here and have them actually speak. And so we are a little disappointed in the fact that, that we didn't get more feedback. But then again, that may have been the fact that we were not that early with planning everything either. But yeah, he was UMAC, anyhow. We, uh, we had a lot of people before the meeting uh, ask us to make sure that we got AWIPs here, and we were not able to get them here as much as we thought we were, were going to have them here. Um, it, it's clear we need them here more. I, I, it's here Monday, and then a little, a little bit. Okay. Okay. Still need, need AWIPs here all three days in, entirely. We're, we're it's something we recognize, and we're we're working on it. I've had a fairly long career in the in the National Weather Service. I've been been in over 20 years, and um, I just started my role as SSD chief in Southern Region headquarters in in March, but. This was really good for me because I think I have a much better understanding of the entire process at INSEP and EMC and, and everything. So this was a really good learning experience for me. Uh, my overall feedback, I thought there were overall was a you know, pretty good mix of presentations and discussions, uh, but probably the proper mix. And with regard to getting Sue's involved, um, you know, whether or not you know, Lou requested or not, I think that's a really good idea. Because uh, I was a Sioux for a long time, I was a forecaster for a long time, and I didn't know some of the stuff I learned here today. So, if we can figure out a way to either invite Sioux physically here, or you know they could participate remotely, you know maybe have them present you know some case studies. Maybe one or two Sioux from each region comes up and you know shows the major problems in the region with regard to uh, you know model successes and you know model shortcomings. Might be a good way to get them involved. Oh, I'll, I'll just make a, a comment about that. That that makes sense, and in, including some forecasters as well as Susan and so on. But some of that stuff goes on during Meg at the same time, or, and some of that stuff goes on during the same time at Meg. So I think Meg will be sort of that continuous connection, and then we kind of regroup, evaluate things, and so on um, at the at this meeting. And maybe things won't be quite so uh, uh, step functionish, or uh, maybe um, you know unexpected. So. Anyway, through the communication with 
Jeff and Glenn and, and so on. So. Hi, I'm Jason Chasse, STI. Uh, I'm not a uh, environmental scientist by any stretch, but I found uh, that this uh, format of uh, being a hybrid was really beneficial, a lot of really good information. Uh, I do think on the, the freeform structure, uh, if, if it could be a little more um, uh, articulated up front what to expect and, and just some of that. Um, some of the things that I noted on, and I think uh, Bill Lopenza, you know, uh, gave some uh, some suggestions for continuing to work on it. But the requirements process, I'm I'm very skeptical of, of where we're going with cards. Uh, you know, I lived through the OSIP process. Uh, they certainly had um, good project management components, but the requirements management, the the common vision of where it is we're trying to go. That layer under strategy, I think, it is essential. Uh, I, I would hope that um, you know, with some more consultation with the senior leadership, we could be less dependent on um, personalities or leadership members attending meetings, and more of sending the documentation in a common place that that sort of sets up. This is our boundary. This is our swim lane and play space, and. Um, we have less degrees of freedom in, in the planning conversation. Well, the whole the whole thing with cards, I think it's 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 um, it's going to be better than OSIP. Some people say that that's a, a zero information statement, but um, but uh, I, I think I think Andy is trying to go the right way. But I also I was rather disappointed about the fact that that it was AFS front center and uh, and, and everything else, and that. Uh, the links through STI was essentially non-existent, and so um, I'm going to be pushing Andy to fix that. In the meantime, I'm not going to hold my breath, and I'm going to start filling the vacuum, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, um, I think one other thing here, and this kind of jumps off of where we've kind of been going, but certainly something that was brought up today that I think is really important, and maybe something we can discuss where we are next year at this time at the next NPSR, and that I think the thing that was really brought out today is we've got to make sure that we have some good breakthroughs with communication with the field and um, EMC. And so where we are with that, and I think you know maybe we can even broach a lot of that through the MEG and then report out where we are and what, we, what we've learned for next year. Good point. I see at least two people still making vigorous notes. We'll do some version control on that soon. So, anything else? Um, so, uh, next year's meeting is cast in stone. We just established that, right? He's smiling. Okay, Domingo. <laughs> what did he say? He just whispered him a wari in my ear. <laughs> I actually, anyway, I actually thought he said meet in Hawaii on Himawari. <laughs> well, actually, I do want you guys coming out. Hawaii. Okay, Hawaii. He just invited us all to Hawaii. Um, January, definitely. Uh, I, so my only, like my only Pacific region has, region has a large travel budget this year. All right. Hurry up or else I'm going to, like Steve, forget what I was going to ask. My, only, my question was, does anybody miss the products meeting that we used to have for that third half day where we talked about the nuts and bolts of products. We only touched on it a little bit with what Becky had said, um, and maybe it's one of those things we can alternate. You know, every other year we have a, a little bit of extra session. Um, and again, with what I hear, the communications opening up, especially for Pacific region, uh, and hopefully uh, Alaska as well, um, We'll we'll be able to talk about positive things in the products in the products realm rather than hearing about complaints. Very good. So, um, uh, I did the most important thing of the meeting this morning, uh, and I do the second most important thing hopefully later this week, which is the save the date announcement for the next meeting. So, as usual, we want to make sure that we don't overlap with AGU and that we don't overlap with the Hurricane Center's um, uh, NOAA Hurricane Conference. I just found out from 
good sources that the hurricane conference is not set yet, so I will send them a save the date and make sure that they don't overlap with me. So uh, we are tentatively scheduling for the 5th or the 7th. Uh, AGU is starting on the 12th, and normally the, uh, the NHC conference is around the 1st, so that should fit. <laughs> so that should not be an issue. So uh, this time around, uh, I would uh, thank again, even though most people are gone already, I would thank uh, uh, Mary for helping behind the scenes. Thank you. Excellent, excellent as usual. Uh, she's not she's not uh, here right now, but uh, Tammy is took took care of a lot of practical leg work and the the desk uh, behind here. Central region. <laughs> and and John I Central Region. John, are you online? Uh, on Central Region for providing the webinar uh, line. Thank you very much. Also, uh, special thanks to uh, Jeff Menneken who. Uh, sort of took the lead on the little team that we put together to uh, organize this, trying to not do it completely in-house. Having said that, I'm volunteering Jeff for organizing the next uh, year's meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Since this is uh, going to be completely integrated with what the MAG is doing, but this time around, uh, we don't have the excuse of a new MAG and things like that. So, of course, uh, on our side, it will be... Uh, the, uh, uh, the leadership team, uh, it, it's not, not just Jeff. I'm going to keep him a little busy. Uh, it's going to be uh, Andrew and Mike have done a lot of work on that too, so we'll keep doing that. Uh, but if uh, we want to do this the right way, if we want to do this integrated, and if we want to do this in such a way that um, uh, uh, we evolve this even further, uh, Mike, can you give me somebody from MDL to help organizing? Are you, are you going to be part of the team to organize the meeting and set the agenda, or can you nominate somebody? Okay, sounds like a plan. NCO, Becky, I want somebody from you guys actively involved with the... the we'll, we'll talk with Ben in our regular meetings, but for the record, I want somebody from NCO involved with the organization for next year. Um, NOS, anybody online right now? Uh, water centers is going to be involved involved with that. Oh, Becky again. <laughs> and um, we'll uh, we'll uh, figure out uh, the, uh, who else we put on there. Probably some of the center folks inside here in the building. Uh, we would like to have at least one or two SSD chiefs on there. Uh, Ken wanted to follow up on uh, the last session. You want to be part of the organization? Okay. Yeah, uh, don't know how big we want to make the group, but uh, uh, we. I, I hope the point gets across. I do want to get this started early. Earlier, we don't have the excuse for waiting for the UMAC this year, and I want to have everybody integrated with that. So, if you have anybody uh, who you want uh, to be part of this organization, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to send out a save the day already very soon now, and I'll I'll put a questionnaire in there for. Uh, those who want to be involved with the uh, with the organization of it. <coughs> Excuse me. Since you brought up the UMAC, um, I'm just curious. You know, the report came out, and it'll take time to digest it. But is there any plans for follow up on? kind of like what we saw with some of the other reports, like the NAPA, that our leadership has some kind of formal response to how what we plan to do with that information. So, I mean, and, and I know it will take some time, but it... Well, I'm, I'm not I'm not a UMAC member, but I'm well involved in, in informed about the details. UMAC is a subcommittee of the UCAN committee. Uh, the UCAN committee is supposed to be doing a deep dive every five years and follow-ups every year. And so this year would have been the deep dive, but we're going to do that next year because we decided that this is more important. Uh, along that same line, uh, UMAC is supposed to be uh, uh, doing annual uh, tag-ups with all of us. So uh, I don't know that that process is completely set in place, but I sort of expect a similar type of approach that uh, is done with uh, the full uh, UCAN committee in, uh, in the sense that uh, at least there will be a tag-up uh, every year and 
possibly a little deeper and, and, and every three or five years or so a deep dive. Uh, yeah, and um, if you look at if you look at the um, uh, both uh, Ricky's slides and my slides have uh, have links on them uh, to the UCAN website. And the UCAN website has all has a preliminary report on it. I'm pretty sure that they're going to publish the official report also to the website. Uh, could I suggest, um, you know, similar to how the Sudo conference was done, where they had a, a Google internet site and then it was linked to the, the Google Drive, uh, if you could explore that uh, for the next go around, uh, it just seems to help with uh, keeping people all in the same place and a consistent place for information. We already have all our presentations on the Google site. Oh, okay. that, that's how that's how we get it to begin with. So, uh, and that is actually on the on the front page of the agenda. Great. Uh, I, I'm, I'm glad you suggested that. That's why we did that this year for the first time. Anything else? Going once. Going twice. I was going to say going home, but no, we're going to the STI meeting tomorrow, right? Thank you. Uh, thanks, everybody, for coming. Again, thanks, everybody, for helping out. And most important, thanks, everybody, for making this a great meeting with uh, lots of really positive interaction. Um, I really like these meetings because uh, uh, they are, uh, they're constructive, they're positive, and uh, in the meantime, they're not beating around the bushes either. Uh, this is really the way we need to go. And as, <laughs> as I said once or twice before, uh, it has had its purposes. It still has its purposes, but we have a bunch of vacuums that we can can start filling more with this one too. And it is really, really, really nice to see people uh, coming to the right place to talk about the right things at the right time and <coughs> and and at the right level. So I'm uh, thank you all and uh, let's start let's end with the last round of applause for all the people who have worked hard for getting this more happening. And a big round of applause for Dr. Michael Eck. Thank <phone rings> you.